one more episode. Hopefully, nobody has got tired of us yet, but we're back. Another A Toast to Life, Most Organic, Most Authentic podcast. And we have, have you seen them on, I believe, ESPN? ESPN. Sports Center. Yes, sir. If you subscribe to his Instagram already, but we have a legend in the game, Mr. Darian Johnson. Let's go. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, bro? I want to appreciate you for coming through on a beautiful Saturday. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. Beautiful appreciate Saturday. You. Thank you for having me. I'm surprised you're in L.A. right now. And I heard people fly you out. Yeah, so, you know, I live in L.A. Ooh. I live in L.A., bro, yeah. Yeah, born and raised, and um, I live in uh, West L.A., Playa Vista area, so. Damn, yeah, yeah, okay. Right cause in my backyard. The first time I seen you, I mean, obviously, South May, it's in your West Covina. Yeah. So I thought you were from that side. No, no, no. So I was born in L.A., um, raised, kind of split um, L.A., and then the Inland Empire. I moved to West Covina um, during high school because I went to Bishop of my high school. So I moved to West Covina to my grandparents' house. Um, just easier to get to school. And, uh, yeah, I kind of just lived there after I was done playing ball. I kind of just stuck around there because my friends were there. But Yeah. What would you play? Um, where did I play? What did you play? I played football. Ooh. Yeah, what I position? played football. Um, DB, I played corner. Lockdown? Yeah. Strapped? Yeah, yeah I was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I was pretty good. Um, did, you didn't pursue anything in football? Was that not the calling? Was it? No, yeah, I definitely did. Um, I played football for 19 years straight. So after I finished college ball, um, I played pro ball for a while until I was about 24, and then that's when I kind of j- made the transition to fitness. You mind us asking where did you play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I had some workouts with some NFL teams right after right after college. Uh, after that, CFL, um, Arena, LA Kiss. After the LA Kiss, I went overseas for two years, lived in France, and that was it. I think that was that was when I was done. Ooh, yeah, I was done playing after that. <laughs> what was the, uh, what was that sign look like when you were like, all right, I'm done? Uh, I think it was just time for me to figure out what I, what life was gonna look like for me after ball and outside of football. Um, that's all I knew. Facts. Um, growing up, I thought that I would play football forever. You know. And um, because a little kid, we all think we're going to play that sport for. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when you're talented and, and you know, you're pretty good at something, um, you know, and I'm blessed. It took me a lot of places, but I had a lot of time by myself to think when I was living overseas. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just grew and kind of figured out, you know, what I wanted to do after. How was that experience of being overseas by yourself, away from home, away from your loved ones? How was that type of time alone basically it was different man it was different um I'm grateful for it I think that was like my biggest period in my life of growth um yeah it was it was different man didn't know any French uh was just basically (laughs) dropped off there there was one other American on the team yeah um yeah we just had to figure it out on the fly but it was good um I loved it you let your game do the talking yeah yeah I loved it uh made great friends and you know lifelong friends over there um, shout out to my French family, but yeah, I love them. And it, it was great though. That's dope. So I love taking it back to when growing up, we could, we could, we can start from, mm, what's a good one? Elementary transition to junior high to high school. Were you, are you a confident, completely person? Confident. confident. Um, yeah. I've always been pretty confident in myself. I think that just comes from like my, being so good at what I did, right? So yeah. I was always kind of popular. I was always, you know, a, a good athlete, really good athlete. And uh, you know, as kids, um, that's, that's like the biggest thing, right? Yeah. So if you're, you're if you're playing pop Warner football, you know the the guys that's the best on the the guy the best guys on the team. Yeah, the you most know, popular. The shit, most popular yeah. guys. So, nice. um, yeah. And then you know, as I got older, um, I, I've always been confident in myself, but it just started to shift, right? Definitely. So like because of different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I'm confident in myself because of different things now than I was, you know, when I was a kid. You know? Yeah. So right now with yeah, we're not gonna deny everybody watching, we know you're popping on Instagram. <laughs> you're popping on social media. How has that transitioning into being on these type of platforms, how has that made you different? How have you viewed it? How like how what's your thought process now with social media? Like being in this spotlight, um, 
It's it's interesting. Um, I think the most like the most like humbling part is, you know, superstars, right? So people like I'm a huge fan of Kevin Hart, you know, him following me and knowing who I am, right? That's that's like the biggest like when he followed me, that was kind of just like, whoa, whoa. like <laughs> yeah, super humbling experience. But um it's it's a little different. It's a little different, but I'm just grateful that growing up I was kind of always exposed to being having some type of attention Excellent. from being good at sports. Yeah, you yes, know? of course. And um, so I was, I was able to handle it a little bit better, yeah. right? Because if, if I wasn't exposed to that um, growing up or, you know, being good at football, then it would, it would be a way different experience. I may not, you know, know how to handle the attention that comes with, you know, social media and all that. Was it a lot of attention right at the beginning? When What was, like, your first viral video that, that went out? Bro, um... So I had a video, my first Sports Center video. Um, it got on Barstool, then it was on Sports Center as well. Um, I was at around eighty thousand followers when that dropped, um, when they posted that, and you know that was kind of like my first like viral video. But I was growing at a rapid pace before yeah. they before they posted that. So you know I was I went from like thirteen thousand followers to to eighty thousand in the span of. I don't know, maybe like six months or seven months or something like that, less than a year. Damn. So I was already kind of growing at a rapid pace before yeah, they yeah. dropped it. And when they dropped it, it just kind of exploded from there. Ah, damn. So did you get any sort of like endorsement or communication with those type of brands when that got exposed? Um, not, I, not necessarily. Um, it was a lot of notifi- like notoriety, um, building my following, but I was already, you know, I've already, I was already signed with Celsius, um, and I think I had a, I didn't have a clothing brand yet, but, um, shortly after that video went viral, I did sign a deal with a, a, a clothing and supplement company. So, um, I don't know if it was because of that video or because they were yeah. kind of already watching me, but they believed in, but I mean, we got to give it up. He's sponsored by Celsius. So yeah, Celsius. let's Shout go. <laughs> How was that first feeling when that happened? When you get that email or message, like, Hey, we want to sign you on. I, I emailed them. Oh, yeah. Um, I was shooting with a there's a guy, um, my bro, Warren, prove it on Instagram. He was already at, you know, 400,000, close to 400,000 followers. And, um, you know, before I started blowing up, you know, I would shoot with him. I would shoot content with him all the time. And he was sponsored by Celsius. And I remember one day we're shooting content and uh, we're shooting my video. And the Celsius can is, is still in the video Like we just forgot to take it out. Yeah. You know, because oh, I'm not doing it. So, yeah, so um, that post did extremely well. I didn't tag Celsius. Um, no, I did. I did tag Celsius. Um, and that post did extremely well. And I was just like, yo, like, I'm just going to email them, right? So I, I sent, I think I DM'd them. I sent them the post and was like, hey, um, check this out. Like, this post did X amount of numbers. Were you already at, like, 80,000 at that time? No, 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 no. I was at around, I want to say, 60. I was around 60 that at that time, 50 or 60K. Um, and, uh, yeah, I negotiated the deal myself. Um, and then I signed with them for three months. And then from then on, I've been with them since. So what what kind of process or knowledge did you have to be to negotiate a deal for yourself? Just asking my friends that are in the industry already, that were kind of big in the industry. Um, I guess the, the, the rubric that we went off of is, um, how many followers, so every 10K, how much is that worth, mm. right? So then um, we just kind of did it like that. So he told me like, hey, you know, every 10,000 followers you have is X amount of dollars. So kind of just go off that. And then I just put it together like that, send it to Celsius. They said, okay. And then, yeah. They said, all right, cool. Yeah, it was dope. <laughs> but you did your research. Yeah. Did you graduate college? I did graduate from college. Do you mind us asking what you graduated with? Yeah, yeah. I graduated with a criminal law degree. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Just in case he wants to be in in the in that industry. Huh? Yeah. Why didn't you continue in that? Man, like I said, growing up, I was naive. So, you know, in college, I'm, you know, 18 years old. You know, I'm a true freshman. I started on the football team. Um, and Where'd you go to college? New Mexico State. Yeah, so, you know, I'm a starter, Division One football um, at 18 years old, and 
again, in my head, it's all football. I'm going to make it pro. So I, I went to college with the intentions of majoring in uh, communication. Um, from then, I switched on to criminal law later mm -hmm. just because I wanted to major in something because grades were very important. You know, my, my family, my parents are big on grades. Um, I had really good grades in high school. Before that, I had good grades. I was a valedictorian in, uh, in middle school. So um, school is, like, always important. So I just wanted to make sure I majored in something that was fun and interesting to me yeah. so I can get good grades. It uh, wasn't about, like, I wasn't thinking long term when I, when you were, I did it. That You were just thinking about that like moment. Like, good, good grades. Like, I, I like studying. I like going to criminal justice class, you know. It was fun for me. So I think you're the first one that says yeah. they've liked to go through. <laughs> My amiga here, Angela, she's about to graduate in a week. Okay, congrats. A week, which it's, it's, it takes a lot. Yeah, it does. It does, man. And, I, you know, I like writing, too, you know? What do you write? Um, well, at one point, I wanted to write a book, but, um, you know, we, that's, a, that's a different story <laughs> for a different day. But uh, but I'm sure now you can write a story. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was actually actively writing for about two years of my life, and I still kind of have that stuff saved. But, um. Yeah, I liked writing, and, you know, you had to do a lot of papers in criminal justice, and writing's always been easy for me, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, majoring in criminal law. Um, and in the back of my head, I was like, hey, I could always be a lawyer if I want to go back to school. Yeah. So, you know, that's not a bad thing either. But. Nah, I think, I mean, congrats to you, because you built it in a way that if this didn't work out, you have this. But I'm pretty sure you didn't have a plan B when you took off in in fitness or did you think about plan b did you have like all right plan a is this but if it doesn't work you really thought about plan b man interesting um no didn't have a plan b i actually i worked a job uh for about six months um i was a case like a case manager for kids on juvenile kids on probation mm -hmm. um so i did use my degree for a little bit and that was right after ball then jason opened the gym Told Jason, hey, DM, DM Jason. He had no idea who I was. Uh, DM'd him, like, hey, I'm going to be one of your trainers. He's like, uh, like, who is this guy? You know, but, <laughs> who is but, this? But okay, sure enough, you know, I'll start going to all the, the events, the meetings. Um, and then, you know, was really successful right away at, at personal training. I think um, before the gym even opened, I had about 15 clients already waiting for to train with me. So uh, right away, right out the gate, I was a good trainer, made, made some great money. Um, and, you know, was successful doing my thing. Didn't really have a plan B. Quit my job um, and kind of just took off. And then the social media part kind of took off during quarantine. And, yeah, it's crazy. So it was quarantine that, boom. Yeah, I was I was just, you know, 13,000 followers, uh, very busy personal trainer, entrepreneur. And, uh, yeah, I was doing my thing. Quarantine happens. Damn. I'm bummed. Uh, like, damn, where, where's my money going to come from? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm tripping out. Uh, and, I mean, you know, I was training an actor at the time, and he had to stay in shape because um, he still had, you know, work to do. Can we say the actor's name? Uh, Julian Works. My boy Julian Works. Shout out to my boy Jules. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, he's sir. on Lone Star 911. Plays Mateo. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dog. Dude, honestly, favorite yeah. show. Yeah. That's every, month, every Sunday night, Monday, I'll watch yeah, that's my guy. So I'm training him at the time. And, um, you know, me and him are boys at this point. So we're just, you know, not only are we training, but we're spending a lot of time together during the whole quarantine. Like we, our quarantine was not quarantine. <laughs> we having fun every day at his house. And, you know, we're training, working out. I'm working out with him and he would record me. So we finish our workout and I would just do like the most creative things with things around the yes, house. Take us through fucking that. Yeah. You know, I've seen your ab wheel on a treadmill. I've seen your ab wheel on different dumbbells jumping around to different, like five, six different. Yeah. How do you like your thought process? Bro, people ask me this all the time and I can't even explain it. So um, during that time during quarantine with, with your boy, mm -hmm. how did you come up with it? What was the thought process or what, what went through your head? So, so like, like the only thing I can control was like a putting out content, right? Correct. So, Hey, I'm dropping every single day. I'm posting on Instagram. He's recording me. I know some days he's like, damn, this I DJ don't like what the what the hell is he doing? Like he put so much effort into this. <laughs> it's just like like he didn't understand at the at that time. But yeah. um, you know, I would just find the most random things at his house that you could do, um, that you could work out with. So like a, a case of water. And I'll sit 
I'll, I'll take it to the grass. Hey, grab my phone, bro, record me. And I just start coming up with different things that you can do. And they started, you know, getting more saves and shares. And because it's like, okay, everyone doesn't have weights at home. And everyone's actually in quarantine. And some people were so bored that they actually took the time out to do the things that I was doing. <laughs> and it was working. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping. And eventually it just, just grew. One thing, one thing, just, it was just one thing. It was one video that just hit. So the moment that you got on ESPN, you got a sports fan, a Sports. What was that initial feeling, thought process? Like, was it like, I made it type of thing? Was it a fuck, I got to keep doing more? Or was it like, hell yeah, I did it. I'm good. It was surreal. Um, it was a surreal moment. I think it was more like inspiring and motivating for me um, than like I made it. I'm not like, I've never been the type of guy to get like complacent. Like I always want more. I heard. I always <laughs> want more. Like we it's heard, never bro. enough. Jason told us. Jason it's never told enough, us. man. It's never enough. Um, so, you know, I took a second to, you know, dwell in it. But, you know, the next day it was it was back to work back to work i had to keep going and so yeah. now what are you posting two or three times a day one time a day oh one time a day one time a day on a ig and tiktok only once one time damn i'm not in that luxury i gotta post three four times a day just to make it happen one time man but so what are you still training clients now like what is now your routine that you keep up with that i mean everybody sees you on on social media if they haven't ran into it, it's gonna pop up yeah so I'm curious, we're all curious, like, what is a day in the life of Darian? I don't know if you took that out yet on YouTube or anything. No, no, no. Um, so right now, I, no, I don't train clients anymore. Um, I actually, in the past maybe six months, I kind of transitioned into, I'm full-time content. So I'm full-time content creation. Um, the day in the life for me is wake up, you know, do my, do my <laughs> meditations, um, and I go to the gym. I'm an early bird. I like to I like to work out first thing in the morning. What time? Um, I'm a I'm an eight a.m. wake upper or seven. I'm I'm between seven and eight every single day. Um, do my meditations. Um, I'm usually out of bed and posted by eight thirty. Um, gym maybe by ten. Done with the done with the gym around eleven eleven thirty. Um, right after I sh right after I work out, I shoot content. So if I'm linking with if I'm Shooting content by myself, I'll shoot right after I work out. So right after I work out, boom, set up the camera, work, uh, do a do a workout, and uh, you know record it. If I'm linking up with boys, it's usually like an hour gap, so I have to like travel to a different gym, and then shoot content with them. So what you're saying is that you don't record content during your workout? No, 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 no. I do a full workout first, and then I shoot content. Oh Jesus fucking Christ! But that's see, this is things that. Social media that we don't see. Yeah, so, okay, so let me just set the record straight. Please, please do. Please a lot do. of people think, like, my full workout is the stuff that I do on Instagram. A lot of times, like, those ab workouts, yes, I actually do them, but that's not, like, the only thing I do. Like, I have a full split. I do lift weights. Like, I don't only do calisthenics. You know, you have to you have to work out, and I, d I definitely do that. So, like, you know, chest day, back day, the typical. Can we know your uh, your numbers, Pete? Like, squat, bench, dead? Bro, I honestly don't, um, I don't PR, I don't do that anymore. I don't max out anymore. Um, I just work out just to, you know, look good and feel good and stay healthy now. You know, when I was playing football, that was something that I did. What was but, your 225 record? Um, at Pro Day, I did 225 19 times. And I weighed, Ooh. I weighed 184, 183 pounds. And you're 40? 435. You're moving. Yeah, it was pretty fast. You're moving. Pretty fast. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier meditation. Why do you meditate? Uh, I just it's just important for me, like like to have my mind in a clear space, right? And it it just helps with the flow of my day. It helps me to you know set my intentions and you know just just stay focused on the things that are that are important, you know, and not not because life can like weigh on you a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I think every human, like, we go through things every single day. And, you know, meditation is, like, my time to release it. You know what I'm nice. saying? Uh, feel it, release it, and then yeah. kind of just tap back in to, you know, focus. What's, what's uh, if you don't mind us asking, if you can share it, like, one of the toughest moments you personally had to go through that, I mean, 
They dwell on you. Oh, man. Uh, the toughest moment in Darian's life. Toughest moment in my life? Yeah. Man, that's tough. Um, I think losing people. Oof. I think losing people, um, you know, whether it be a family member or a friend passing away or, like, losing a good friend because of, you know, something that happened. I think those are those are things that, like, that get me, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, people that are around me, I have a lot of love for them, you know, and I care about them. So um, when I lose somebody uh, that meant a lot to me, I think those are, like, those are, like, the moments that are, like, damn. Like, you had to go through that personally? Yeah, I think, every, yeah, everyone, Correct. everyone, everyone. You know, we all have, you know, people in the family that pass away, Life's short, you know, saying tomorrow's my promise. And then you, I think as we grow older and as we experience things, you know, we grow away from friends. You know, you, you start to grow apart. And that's just a part of life. Are you good with that when you grow away from friends? Like, obviously, you're growing at a rapid at a rapid rate. So are you, is there a certain type of thing that you do with your friends? You try to keep them around? Or is this, if I'm, I'm, if I'm progressing and you're not with me, I got to leave you behind type of thing? I think, uh, like, that's, like, as you, like what you just said right now, I don't think that's something I would say to myself, but, like, I think it's just... It happens. It is what it is, you know? It's what it is. Um, but, like, all my friends, like, my closest friends, I've been friends with them for 15, 16 years. I Is have Bishop? Yeah, I have two hands full of friends that I've been friends with for over 10 years. Let's cop it up. Keep me in the friends, bro. Yeah, you got to yeah. keep those friends. Yes, sir. So that, so that, yeah, that's dope. Um... So I, I personally, I don't really think that I've had to distance my, I, th- there's been people, but for the most part, like all my friends are still, still there. Still around. Still around. There's, there's family now, you know. Do they make fun of you because, hey, like now you're big or is, is that, uh, do they joke around with you? I think they joke around with other people. Like when, you know, other people around there, you know, they're like, oh, DJ, my other friends like, that's just dairy and like, <laughs> you don't know dairy before like all this, like yada, yada. But no, nah, they don't, you know, you, you get your, Oh, look at Mr. Hollywood, you know, but um, they mean well. And it's just, you know, they just joke. So, so do you consider yourself now Hollywood? No, nah, never. Ten toes on the floor. Always, always, man. Anybody, anybody, you could ask anybody about me. Like they'll always say like DJ has been DJ. Like he has not changed one bit. Yeah. Not one bit. Damn. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody. You can ask anybody. I'm giving you permission. Anybody that, that knows me. They'll be like, oh, no, that's been him since since I've known him. That's fucking dope. It, the, the biggest thing, right, is when a lot of people get some sort of fame, light, a viral video, whatever, some people lose those 10 feet on the floor. Yeah. I don't talk to me. Or I, I'm too big. Or oh, I'll talk to you later, blah, blah, blah. You said something earlier that the you have two you have a two hands worth of people that are just close to you. How much do those people mean to you? Like really mean to you? Everything. They know everything b- about you. They're they're their family, yeah. Like, I, 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 have I you cried? Do you cry? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I'm an emotional dude, low key. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hey, I, we gotta ask. What's your what's your sign? I'm wait, a tourist. Wait. I'm a Taurus. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a Taurus. Um, I'm uh, like, I don't believe in the signs, by the way. I don't believe in Me it. Me either, but, but according to everybody, the, what's your sign? No, the astrology yeah. thing does have something right, though, about me. I am, I am stubborn. Like, hyper stubborn. St- hyper stubborn. But, um, you know, um, it is what it is. But, yeah, no, I am an emotional dude, though. Low key. Emotional how? Like, like, I, like I'll cry. I'll definitely cry. Like, I don't care. My friends have seen me cry if it's that serious. But, like, I think it's, like, it's, it's like, I'm either not emotional at all so to the point where people <laughs> think that, like, oh, he nonchalant. He doesn't care. Yeah. Or, like, I'm hyper-emotional. What's a hyper-emotional? For like, I'm, I'm going to cry. Like, not, like, boo-hoo cry, but, like, if, it, if it's something that I'm hurts me, know, you can't I breathe. don't. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. We're not doing that. But if it's something that means, if it means a lot to me, and yeah. you know, what I'm saying, I don't care who's around. Like, I'll, I'll cry. You're in tune with your emotions. Yeah, for sure. Is there a? a I, we always ask, and the reason being because one, we cut it off for TikTok. Two, when people listen to this, it's at seven in the morning. In the morning, most of them uh, either late in the afternoon. But one thing about right now, this during this time in generations and everything, we all listen for a quote or phrase. That because 
you know, I, I love Steve Harvey, Eric Thomas, Inky Johnson, even uh, Nipsey Hussle, I see. TMC right TMC, there. TMC, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. We listen to those videos, we watch those videos, and we're just like, damn, cool, I, I can resign with that. Is there something that you always remember, live by, when you hear it, you're just like, yeah, it's go time. Oh, man. We drop questions here, bro. Well, TMC, first of all, for, forever, I, yeah, forever, it's forever going to be that. Um, control the controllables. That's something, like, I think about. Whenever, like, something's going wrong or, like, I'm just, I'm just pissed, like, for whatever reason, it could be anything. I'm yeah. just mad. Um, I just kind of just control what's in my control, and I just focus on that. And that helps me stay in, like, a, a good, uh, I guess, frame of mind. It yes. helps me, like, like not, you know, because we'd be stressed out. You'd be thinking about it all day. Now you're taking a hit in other parts of your life because you're worried about things you have no control over. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that, that just helps me stay focused, stay focused on what, what's in my control, you know. Stay focused and move on. Yes, sir. That literally... Honestly, what you said is something that we've lived by that I always tell everybody. It's like, yo, if, if you cannot control the outcome, just move on. There's no point. It's wasted energy. It is. It's and energy is valuable. Exactly. And then I just look at it like that's the energy I can be putting towards something else. You know, and I got so much going on in my life that it's like it's not even it's it's not enough hours in the day now. So I just rather just put that energy into something else. And like no matter what it is, like. Just like, hey, like I can't control, I can't control anything. I can't yeah. control that part. So like, I'm not gonna give it no energy. Yeah, you you can wake up at four or five in the morning, and you're still not gonna have enough time. You try to do everything possible. You try to, and even even if transitioning to trying to keep everybody happy along that way, mm -hmm. we can't. Yeah, no, I don't believe in doing that. Mm. I don't believe in uh, trying to keep everybody happy. Was there a point, or you've always like this has always been that? That thought process. Nah, it's been a, it was a point. Um, I don't remember when it, I think maybe it was definitely during playing ball. Um, you know, people asking for tickets to the game. You can't get everybody tickets to the game. You get a Can certain I get amount. tickets in the 50 yard line, please? You know, um, oh, DJ, you know, I get invited to these events. You know, you got to bring a, you could bring a plus one or a plus two. Everybody can't come. And so, like, I just learned that, like, you're never going to please everybody. Never it's, enough. It's it's never enough, and the only thing that you need should be worrying about is pleasing yourself and making sure you're happy yeah. at the end of the day because you can please people all you want, but once, you know what I'm saying, some people, when they get what they want from you, they can dip out, God. right? And you just spent all that energy trying to make them happy, and you neglected your own happiness, you know what I'm saying? So that was just like kind of like the switch for me. Nah, it, it, it happens, and it takes – a certain amount of mental process to understand it. Like, all right, you know what? Maybe I, even even as tough as I can't make my family happy, but if this was worse for me and makes me happy and this is what I know is going to pay off, fuck it, I got to do it. Absolutely. But because other people have an opinion, there's, oh, well, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to get you mad. I'm just going to stop what I'm doing. Yeah. And then down the line, people always say like, well, because this happened, that's why I'm here. Like, bro, like, nah, because you wanted it to be. Right. It's, it's what happened. Right. So, throughout that, so, I'm very curious, and I was thinking about this question throughout the week, and since we agreed on this, and what is your musical playlist in the gym? Oh, in the gym? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, Yeah, top five songs in the gym, and then I'm going to ask you a different question after that. Top five? That's a tough, that's a tough... All right, let me go. Let me go. Top three songs. This may not. This is off the top of the dome, so I might forget some. But in the gym, Fergalicious definition. No, no, no. We're definitely not doing that. Uh, Drake. Drake. I mean, I'm always in the mood for Drake. Um, dang, bro. Uh, I like Blue Bucks Clan. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I like Blue Bucks. You know, walking in. Uh, anything Drake. Um. <sighs> I like blast a lot, so I like I go from like I listen to everything, man. So like I can listen to R and B, ooh, an entire gym. What's session. your R and B song, uh, bro? Like, bro, uh, I, I I don't know. I can't just <laughs> say one song, bro. Like it's it's what's the song you've been playing serious. right now? 
Like you've caught yourself playing a little bit more often than others. I like Snow Allegra. Ooh, that's not good. So like find someone like you. That's my jam. Ooh. It's like a just like a you know just like a mellow. Yeah, yeah. Like some banger. I'm, what song do you have in your in your phone in your playlist that would be embarrassing for somebody else to hear you play? Nothing. Oh, why would I be embarrassed about? Music? Well, when someone hears it, they're gonna be like, "You listen to that?" Is oh, there a bro. surprising one? Probably. I, People would be shocked at how much country I know. <laughs> yeah, just like, like, yeah, sir. Like I know, a, like, like a lot of country music. Top one, top two, top two artists, songs, artists. Uh, I like Chris Young and I like Jason Aldean. Um, Chris Young, "Getting You Home." That's probably the number one. That's probably like my favorite one. And I like, uh, uh, I actually like like Brooks and Dunn. "Red Dirt Road" is pretty dope. That's like older country. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The old school stuff. Ooh. The reason why I know this is because when I went to school in New Mexico State, um, it, it was like, it was right next to El Paso, Texas. So, like, country music is big over there. And then the girl I was dating um, prior, like, high school, my last, my first girlfriend. Yeah. Um, her her family, you know, her and her family liked country music. So, that's what kind of just, just got me, like, I didn't like all of it at first. Like, it was just, like, certain things. That, like, I was like, oh, this is dope. Yeah. This is dope. Just being open-minded, and then it was, yeah, it was cool. So you got the boots and everything? No, no, hell no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So no. Should, we get, should we gift you boots? No, no. But I listen to, like, jazz, like. Oh, okay. Ah, jazz is. Bro, everything. I like, I like everything. Ah, that's fucking dope. You brought up relationships. Yeah, what's up? Oh, man, this is big. <laughs> Every podcast I come on, bro. So, <laughs> no, let me, try, let me try to switch this up, right? Now having this platform, do you get more interactions, more DMs, more like? Of course. Of course you get more DMs, yeah. I mean. Is there a crazy pickup line you've gotten? No, I don't use a pickup line. No, that you've gotten. They've thrown at you. I think mine aren't pickup lines. I just really get some like out of pocket, like straightforward to the point. like Be my husband. Like stuff like that and then more, more explicit. And it's just, like, so to the point. And I think people, like, they do it, like, thinking that I'm not going to, res- like, see it. Most, I think most of, most of the girls that send me stuff like that um, don't really expect for me to, to see it or reply. But they're just, they're just doing it because yeah. it's so wild. And, like, sometimes I actually see it. And I'm like, oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Click on their profile. And then they have, like, a bunch of kids and everything. And they're it's, like, oh. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You're out of pocket. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's wild. <laughs> but are you... At- Trying to respectful, you're you have a relationship right now? No, no, I'm single. Single, looking? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm looking. No, but I'm open to I'm open to good advice. Um, settling down. Yeah, I'm open to it. Like I'm not. I've had my fun. You know, I've I've experienced stuff. I know what I want. I know what I don't want. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So like I'm open to it, but I wouldn't say I'm looking. How old are you right now? I'm 30. I just turned 30. Just turned 30. Damn. Okay, so you know what you want. You, you've you been through your experiences and yeah. everything. What is, if talking to a young DJ, what would you tell him about relationships? Man, um, get out there and date more. You know, get out there and date more. I, I've always been, like, the relationship guy. You know, people, like, now, later in my life, like, this past year or so, people don't really believe that. But, like, I've always been... I've always been in relationships and long ones, you know. Um, almost all of my relationships, with the exception of one, were long. What was long for you? Like three years, two years. I've had two, three years, um, two, three-year relationships. And uh, I've had a year-and-a-half relationship. So, like, I've always kind of been tied down. And uh, it it was good, but at some points, like, when I was single, it kind of, like, it kind of, I guess, would hinder me because – I wasn't like seasoned yet. And so like I didn't really know what I wanted. You know, yeah. as I'm as I'm getting older, I'm eighteen years old, I'm in a relationship for three years, and I'm twenty one, now I'm single, but then I get in another relationship at twenty two. And so like I don't I'm I i have not experienced enough to know exactly what I want and what works and what meshes with me personally, you know? So So is I think for us guys, and I hate throwing us under the bus, but marriage is a is a tough subject. 
You ask a guy, de- depending, right? Depending, because there's some guys that get married at 18. Yeah. Get married, and at 22, they're divorced. Ah, fuck that. I ain't never getting married. And then you ask the dudes that haven't been married, and oh, well, nah, not right now. I'm going to go through my fun. Right. And then you get the other ones that are, you know what, I'm just waiting for the right time. Yeah. Going through what you went through, is do you think there is a right time for this? Uh, the right time is when you find the right person. Um, I don't think it's like a like a like a age you should set. Like, I don't think that. I just think the right time is when you find the right person. And you know, what I'm saying whether you want to get married or not, that's up to that's you. To you. Yeah, I, yeah. I I want to be married. I would like to be married. That's like a goal of mine. That's something I see myself. I see myself being married. Is it tough? Know. Is it tough for you in a sense where? You're doing a lot. You're traveling a lot. Is it tough for you to find someone that's like, hey, I, I understand that you got to travel for work and do this and do that. Is that a, a tough thing to do? Because getting into business, I mean, you're your own business now, but getting into business by yourself, like, it's tough for someone to understand, like, hey, you got to be gone half the time or you got to go do this or do that. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to, like, find someone that, understands like the industry I'm in and, and the work I do and that's kind of okay with with you know the platform I have and you know the attention it brings and stuff like that I mean it is I think like women there's been a lot of women in my life that say that they're you know okay with it and but it, yeah. it, it becomes an issue um yeah. un, unless they're in the industry you know if you find someone that's in the industry I think that's a little bit easier of a you know, going forward, you know, you guys can make it work easier because she understands. But people that aren't in my industry, like it, it's so. Is it easier for you to find someone in the industry, or else, or you would want outside, or it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. The right person is the right person. Um, it's e- I would say probably easier to find someone in the industry. Yeah, um, because yeah, you know, you you guys are in the same. You guys see each other at events. You guys live the same type of lifestyle. Your schedules are probably you know About aligned yeah, yeah, yeah so like they get it you know yeah. um so yeah i would say it's probably easier but um you know i don't really say i, I wouldn't say i'm looking for someone that's in my industry though so now i want to transition really quick in the tough what do tough days for you look like, like so we days or no no so we we see you doing content we see you with the fucking ab, ab wheel on the treadmill and right right sprinting at 15 miles an hour faster than the cheetah and everything <laughs> but what do the tough days look like for you when you're just like fuck man I'm too tired to get up I'm, or it's too much man um my tough days bro to be a hundred percent transparent please my uh tough days are self inflicted uh when I you know I go out and the night before and, you know, party and, you know, I may or may not get carried away. Um, but, you know, and I don't get enough rest. And then I got a million things to do because I'm a go-getter. Like, if, I, if I'm, if it doesn't matter what I'm doing the night before, I'm going to get what I need to get done. It's going to get done, period. There's no, you know, I'm waking up at 8, period. You know, I'm going to the gym at this time, period. Mm-hmm. There, there's no, like, I can, I mean, my life I do content. I can sleep in until 12 if I want to or work out at two, but I'm not, you know, and that's, that's a part of like, you know, discipline. I think that's something that's really helped me. Is, is it like the, I'm pretty sure you ran into the, one of the Kobe uh, interviews. He made a contract with himself. No, 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 that's facts. And it's not like me being cliche or like saying no, like trying to copy it. Cause I've seen, no, that's, I mean, anybody knows, you know, there's people, there's people, you know, I got friends that I party with, and they they're gonna they're gonna see, DJ. How'd you get up at eight a.m. and go to the gym and, and work out? No, because I got these are my priorities. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that, and those come first. That was the biggest thing because people could say, "Oh, you took it from them." No, but that's really just what happened. Definitely what I believe in, and it's like, it's I don't know. It's just my character, bro. And I think that it's important to to like it, it builds character, it builds discipline. And, and it, yeah, it's it's important to do. Mike Tyson that, said it: "Without discipline, you ain't shit." Yeah, and then it's like if you if you can't have fun, and and you know, saying if you let fun get in the way of your priorities, then maybe you shouldn't be partying. Partying is not for you. Yeah. You shouldn't be having fun. But like, if you can, you know, have fun in moderation, bro. Fun's fun. We all love to have it, but just make sure it don't get in the way in the things you got to do. And if it doesn't, by all means, like just yeah, you know, that live it that's. 
But I tell him, she knows, Aubrey knows it, Angela knows it. And Angela is, is preaching to the choir today because she's coming, she came, she came for Oxnard. Okay. She came to help us out, share some vibes, do some TikToks. She's going back to go work. So that's it right there. She said there's no option. No option, But man. that that's what we preach here, too. Like, we usually podcast on Sundays. Today's special because we're podcasting on a Sunday. So subscribe. We're doing this. It's a Saturday. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I said Sunday. Saturday. It's a Saturday. <laughs> it's a Saturday. Canelo fight today. When you watch this, then Canelo fight already finished. So comment the winner. Um, it's the same thing. We, we got to wake up Monday morning. We got to go work. Got to go to work. Got to. There's no There's no option. There's no choice to it. You just got to go work. Don't make an excuse. You want it. And how you said, you want to have fun? You make sure you go do what you got to do. Actually, actually, like, my friends kind of, like, think that I'm a psychopath. So, like, even on vacation, bro, like, so, like, I go on vacation quite often. Um, How often? I, pro- bro, probably, probably, I probably take a trip once a month. I, I probably do 10 a year. I'm probably on a plane, like, maybe, like, 12. Like I'm out of here. 12 <laughs> times a year, 12 times a year I'm on a plane. Um, but, like, bro, even on vacation, I'm waking up. I'm partying. I'm there to party and have fun and live it up, live my best life. But I'm waking up and shooting content. And, like, I'm waking up and shooting content. Like, I, I, I went to Mexico. I go to Mexico. I'm, I'm partying, you know, saying we're, we're having a good time. Let's fucking Dude. clap it up for the fucking discipline, bro. Yeah, man, I'm waking up shooting content. Like, I, I, just, I just got back from Miami, went to Miami for my birthday um, a couple weeks ago. Or, yeah, a couple weeks ago. On a Saturday morning, I got up and did a collab with one of my boys. Got up, went to the gym. Um, you know, I get fitness people, you know, all over. So when I'm when we're in the same city, you know, we tap in with each other and we work. We show love. So yeah, so we uh we we shot we shot content. I finished my content. You know, called my homies up. Some of them still barely barely waking <laughs> up. Some of them already at brunch. You're already like, you're, fucking done through everything. I'm yeah. already I'm already worked out like on empty stomach. You know. Ready. I, had to work and they're like bro i don't know how you do this it's insane but like i'm i'm just like obsessed so do you say it's a healthy a healthy obsession yeah i would say it's healthy because it's like i just want to be successful really bad you know what i'm saying I, well, what does success look for you success it means the freedom success means opportunities for the people i love it, it means spending time with loved ones and not having to worry about uh a where where this money's coming from, where that money's coming from. Just the freedom to do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? To live life the way I want to live it. That's and that that that's what like drives me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm obsessed. Like I just know what I want and I know what it takes to get there. And I, I think about it all the time. And I would say it's healthy though, because it's not like like I'm like killing myself. <laughs> right? It's not like yeah, I'm killing yeah. myself for it, you know. Um but yeah. So do you do good with competition or do when you walk into a gym or whatever, do you feel like there's competition or just like you're in competition with yourself? Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I have my own like lane um, I've created and it, it's I don't really feel like there's any comp- like I'm having come to compete with other people. Um, there's a lot of people in the industry um, saturated. It, it's very and, and it's really hard to to get to like that level especially in the fitness industry. There's certain industries like fitness and fashion are the hardest ones to blow up in because it's so saturated. So you have to really stand out. You have to really stand out. And, you know, I got to that point and, you know, the other people that are up there. um, Yeah. There are some people that, you know, that that might be in competition with me, but like, I just focus on what I got to do. I don't really like what I do is what I do. I'm not changing it. I'm not doing this because, that person's doing it and it's going viral. I'm just doing what I do. This is what I do. And, you know, other people are doing what I do, you know, so it is what it is. So would you say you're a pioneer in doing this? A pioneer. What's that? So a pioneer, what we say, how we say it is, we're kind of not the first ones, but we're the ones that have kept going throughout everything happening. Um, so for us, like podcasting from where we're from, we're from Baldwin Park. I'm from Baldwin Park, Dillon, Oxnard, San Fernando, Oregon. But we're from where we're from, either not a lot have continued and they have yeah. started and not continued, but we have going, we've been going strong for a year and now five months. Okay. We're going strong. I'm putting everything into this motherfucker. 
I love it. I love sharing stories. I I, I love sharing stories. The the commentary that we've been getting from other viewers and and followers from TikTok and IG, it's helped them in a certain way, and I love it. I love all of you guys, and that's why we do it. Yeah. I mean, we've been getting left and right people that resonate with the messages we we give, right? Stories that we share. They're like, "Yo, I went through that same shit." Oh yeah. A different way, a certain different way, or maybe the same way, but like, yo, I understand. Yeah. So would you say what you did or what you've been doing, there was a point that people counted you out and you just said, fuck it, I'm going to go full throttle? Uh, nah, actually, the, it's you know what's crazy? Like, I think the support that I've been getting from people, even people I don't even know, people that are like in fitness or just, you know, Instagram friends um, has been, like, really, really, like, it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. very embracive. And, like, they they think that, like, I'm, like, the, the, like, there's people that think I'm just, like, the biggest thing. But like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Like, he's the GOAT of fitness. And, and it's, like, and it's other fitness people. Yeah. So, like, they're, like, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know if, I don't know if, like, I've ever felt like people counted me out. Like, I just feel like my support the so people that support me, like the people that follow me, like it's it's all love and support. So, so what makes you, DJ Darian, different? If if you had a word or set of words that different from like and like in the sense of like fitness, like you walk into a random room, no one knows you, but you walk in, like what makes you different? What makes me different? I don't know, man. It's just like. I don't, I just don't know how to answer that. I just feel like I'm so unique. Like, there's a lot of layers to me, and it's like, I, there's no way that anybody just <laughs> like me. Yeah. Like, right? There's, I'm different. Like, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm just a... Are you a social person? I'm social. Like, I'm a social. I'm super social. Super social. I'm like a, I'm an introvert and an extrovert at the same, same time. Same time, yeah. Same time. Very approachable, you I know understand. what I'm saying? Yeah, Talk yeah, to yeah, everybody. Like, people think that I look intimidating. Like, like they say, like when they initially see me, they think I look intimidating. But you like, think that's because of like the platform, like oh, fuck no, 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 no. I think it, no, it game could face. be that now. It or could be now that game face. It could be a part of that too. But like, I think it's my face, like I, when I'm locked in. But like, really, I'm just locked in. Yeah, that's and what like I, I'm like I have a thousand things on my mind, and sometimes I look like I'm mad or like I'm just straight face. But like, bro, I'm always smiling. But as soon as I'm they talk to you, yeah, 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 very approachable guy. Like you know. Fun. I'm, you know, just yeah. I think that's the same thing. Like we, I've, I'm just the same way that maybe in in the gym wherever I walk down, I may have a serious face. Yeah. But as soon as we say hi, what's up? How are we doing? How are you? Yeah, get to yeah. Know each other. It's having that type of conversation. So having those intimate conversations, who do you go to? To, to like what? to talk about life, talk about oh, certain so, things happening yeah, yeah, with yeah. you personally. So I have a um. I call him my older brother. His name's Caesar. Um, he's 38, 38 years old. So he's like, to me, he's like a big brother, a mentor, and like a he's like he's like almost like my financial consultant too. <laughs> like all, all rolled into one. You spend on stupid shit. No, he's just like he made really smart decisions That's at a young age. Been retired, hasn't worked in like six years. Wait, um, retired, thirty eight. No, like he hasn't worked in like like six years, over six years. Six years, 38, 32? Like, by like 30, 31, 32. Okay. No, my man. Yeah, he just, he he lives life. You know, he wakes up, he does whatever he wants to do. And he, he, he made great decisions. And he's been like, bro, like like that dude, like backbone. Like yeah. I've gone through a lot of stuff, man. And that dude, like I spend time with him. I talk to him about everything. Um, yeah, man, that's like, that's my dog. Um and yeah, so yeah, I, I go to him a lot, um, and you know we talk about intellectual. Things. He's older, so like you know talking to an older person, the conversations are different. Definitely, you know what I'm saying, and we relate on a lot of levels. And when I met him, it's weird because I met him um, at this lounge. I met him at a lounge, and I will always see him, and he will always say what's up to the people I would go with, and then he'll just randomly say what's up to me. I'll be like, what's up, what's up? And then one day I went, um, supposed to be linking up with the people that he knows they flaked last minute. So I'm there by myself. He walked in, we start kicking and chopping it up and then, you know, became yeah. cool. And then we became like this, but like at a time where he had just lost his younger brother. Mm. Right. So his, uh, one of his brothers had passed away. 
um, or older brother. I, I don't remember, but he lost a brother at the time. And like, he was like, it's crazy. Like the time that I met him, cause he's like, I One met him at a time lives. where he really needed me, you know? Yeah. And he's not from here, he's from Virginia. So his family's not here. So like he needed me, we needed each other in a sense. And it, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah. All that, it's the higher power. Yeah. It's crazy. It brings you into certain scenarios that, you know, you never knew you needed to be and you were there. Definitely. So with all that, now you have him and people are, when they listen to this, they're going to be like, yo, like this, this guy goes through, people will see you maybe in a superhero way, right? Oh shit, yeah. that guy's doing the impossible in workouts yeah. and all oh, he's this, is this, but you go through real life shit. Just like everybody else, yeah. Just like everybody else. Now, with, with life happening, what is, what do you think, what do you say, or what do you Tell anybody, like, what is your goal? What is your end goal? My end goal for, like, like where I see myself or... So, what, do, what, do you, what are you trying to build on business? So, in a business gotcha. aspect, because, I mean... Can we, say, can we say your brand? Yeah, of course. You're coming out with the brand. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Coming out with the brand. No. Now, is it out? No, 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 no. Oh, your personal brand. No, I'm Finish. Clothing. No, I'm not coming out with the clothing line. Are you going to come out with the clothing line? Yeah, I mean, yeah, eventually that's a goal. The goal is to to have a clothing line. The goal is to have my own supplement brand. My The goal is to, you know, be the face of a gym. You know, I want to open my own gym. Yes, I don't want to be so hands-on as, like, the, like the owner. I just kind of want to be a face. I want to be the face and, you know, big investor, 50-50 partnership, whatever it is, but we'll definitely have an owner that does the hands-on things, and I kind of just want to be the face and, you know, have like a community of people. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm there all the time. I work out there and just show love, but I don't want to handle like the business thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to have a partner. You don't want to go through the whole stress I that everything comes yeah, with. Yeah, no, I'm not going to have time for that. But uh, like what, what I'm doing right now is so new. Yeah. It's so new. Like the, 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 I guess I hate the word, but the influencer, um, it's, it's so like new and it's taking off to a level that people didn't really understand. Like, how, like, you can make so much money and make a career off social media. Making good money? Yeah, yeah, I'll make good money. Yeah, you making good money. And uh, we had our, our boy Duno, and I had to ask him, was the bag right? And he was like, yeah, the bag is right. Yeah, the bag is, the bag is great. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have no complaints right now. Comfortable. We're good. We're great. We're great. <laughs> uh, so, but no, it's so new, bro, that you never know, like, how high you can really take it. And, uh, uh, yes, you know, yes. it, 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 so my, my, my goal is just to build my brand and build who I am, you know, to the, do it to the yeah. highest level I possibly can. And then after that, you know, just make the, the right moves, the right decisions, the right investments, and, uh, you know, continue to help people out. Really, that's the goal. Do you go to the gym alone? Alone? Alone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I like working out alone. I do I do a lot of things alone, almost everything. That's my next question. A lot of people are scared of being alone. No, no, no. My solitude is everything to me. But I like I like being around certain people, too, though. Like, there's certain people that can hit me up and, like, like oh, yeah, I'm going. Like, I like being around you. I like spending time with you. Okay. But, like, I love my solitude, bro. Like, I have to have a long time to recharge. And if I don't do it, I'm not going to be in the mood to, to I'm not going to be DJ. Like, yeah. the happy DJ smiling, yada, yada, no, my social battery is drained. <laughs> I, I don't want to be here. Yeah. I want to be by myself, you know? Are you, would you say you're alone more, most of, like, your, your work week? Uh, Monday through Friday, um, yes and no. Um, Just depending on like content and stuff. Yeah, because I like I do spend a lot of time. Like I go to the gym, and uh, you know I do collab, so I do spend a lot of time with certain people just working. Um, but like outside of that, bro, like Monday through Friday, I like to just chill. I like to just work, boom, get things done. Like everything's just on a tight schedule, boom, 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 boom. To get you out of a schedule, stuff. moving around. I like to get home, bro chill relax you know do my thing wake up get eight hours of sleep like and just everything is just boom, 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 boom. eight hours of sleep oh yeah yeah that's important sleep is important oh, tell us how please tell me how important sleep is because huh, you don't believe on sleep on this side <laughs> it's everything bro like your bro your sleep pattern can affect your weight like how many calories you're burning like it can affect it can affect your mood it can it affects everything bro how you look you heard this Miss, I slept about two hours. Mister, I don't yeah, sleep bro. anything. Yeah, bro, like, you, you, need, you need, like, seven, 
seven minimum. If I get if I get anything less than six, forget about it. Like talking to me the next day, oh, don't. So that that's why, and that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes when I go out and party and I get carried away because it's like, like whatever. Yeah, man. The next day, do not talk. If you see me, <laughs> bitch, the DJ was up, was up. Boom, and I'm just gonna work it's, out in this. Yeah, don't talk to me. So can we get a warning of when DJ doesn't get a lot of sleep? <laughs> You'll know. You'll know. Facial expressions go tell you everything. Hey DJ, how are you? I just give you a <laughs> little head nod, not not just the same. Yeah. Um, everything you're doing, bro, is just where we at? Huh? Damn, it's a great conversation. I know you were shout out, uh, Jason. You were just on his podcast, Jason. Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, Jason. Man, hey, do, do you don't know the story about how I got my nickname, the App Guy? No, but please, Terror. A crazy story. So, um, this is before the 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 blow up, if you will. But like, so self made West Covina. I'm a trainer there. Jason's getting a booth at for for self made at uh the Fit Expo. Fit Expo. Yeah, yeah. I remember okay. fucking like thirty motherfuckers. Just yeah. So went. so we're getting a Fit Expo booth, um, and everyone's hype. Everyone's pumped. I'd never been to a Fit Expo. Like I I had never been to a Fit Expo before. I don't even know how. Cap. To, no, no, bro. I was. I'm an athlete. <laughs> like I'm. I'm. I'm a. I'm a football player, bro. I don't know fitness people. So like jumping into this, like I have no idea. People were talking about Simeon Pan. I'm like, who is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, was it that one? I was. I went to the Anaheim one. I want to go take a picture with that food. Yeah, no idea who these people are. But anyway, going to the FedEx, where everyone's pumped, everyone's hype. We get into shape. You know, the guys. We got little. You know, playful, like whatever it is, like, you know, hey, jokes, like, hey, well, I'm about to look shredded, yada, yada. Yeah. So Jason's like, man, DJ look shredded, uh, yada, at the Fit Expo. I'm like, yeah, everybody gonna take a picture with me. He's like, <laughs> he, he was like, oh, yeah, they're gonna take a picture. They, go t- they wanna see your abs. I was like, yeah, they're gonna be like, oh my God, that's the ab guy. That's the ab guy. And then Jason was like, wait, 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 wait. No, no, put that in your bio, put that in your name, I know. IG. I was like, what? Nah. And then, like, so we start playing with it, like, Darian Ab guy. I was like, that Ab guy. Because they're going to be like, that Ab guy. Put it in my put it in my name, and it just stuck. I, I swear to you. That, that, is, <laughs> exact, that is exactly how, and it stuck. And that was it. And it stuck. That was a wrap. It stuck. Yeah. It's done good, though. It's done very now good. Now, if you search it up, it's going to pop up. And, and what, that's crazy. That's cr- actually crazy. Google search that shit, the Ab guy. That's actually Have crazy. you done it? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Really it definitely... Push. Probably will pop We're going to do this shit right now. Ready? Ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we just Google search this shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Run? That's crazy. Yeah, we got to show the camera, man, on this. Um, oh, yeah. I don't... Can this camera... Is the camera going to pick it up? But anyway... Yeah, it's going to... Yeah. Zoom, zoom it in on the lens? On the lens real quick? There's a lot on this... Um, this cell, cellular device. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hopefully cr- you got it, but if you... Yeah, if pretty you didn't get it, you got to search it up right now yeah, because... there's a lot of stuff on here. This is the first time he searched this up, so. Yeah, all I did was type in that app guy, but that's that's interesting. Didn't even type in my name, but it's coming up. So that's, so it, yeah, again, it's stuck. And, yeah, crazy. That was a wrap? Yeah. You're just going to stick to that for the remainder of how so, long it goes? So that's how, that's who I, like, that's me. Like, so that's the who, brand. So who is DJ? Who is Darian? What would you, if there is a phrase or a word that describes you by yourself, who would it, what would you say? Yeah, there's a few, man. I would say, like, loving, outgoing, social, intellectual, um, like, peaceful. Um, like, I don't know. There's a few different words. Like, there's other words I can describe me. Other than What's the main word that you would say by yourself? Bro, I cannot just pick one word. <laughs> no way. Too many. Because that's just, like... This is so so much to me. Like you can't just pick one word to describe a person. Like there's so you have a lot, you have a lot of layers. It. You know what I'm saying? And if you just pick one word, like you're just putting yourself in a box because there's just so much more than just that. You know, you gotta get to know a person to really know. Exactly. Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the flowers because you, again, I'm gonna use this word pioneered. You've done it. When you started it, you didn't give up on it. You continued. You grew your brand. You grew your persona. You grew your profiles and everything. Now you're in a platform that right now it's untouchable. In a way, in a sense, nobody can touch you because 
it's you. Yeah. Organically, authentically, it's you. Meaning, if we were to take the cameras off, you're still doing yourself. You're yeah. still doing you. How you said, you go through the ins and outs, you go party, you go have fun, you go do whatever you do, you still get up and you do what you got to do. Yeah. That is commending because a lot of people right now, generations, younger, older, we're all looking for answers. Yeah. We're all looking at people like, yo, if because he's doing it, I can do this. I believe I can do this. So I feel like there's people that are watching you and be like, yo, if he's doing that, that crazy ab thing on the treadmill or jumping off off the different dumbbells, I can do this. I feel like Superman. Even if I can't, I'm going to continue to do it. Don't give up. Yeah. What would be that message to your followers, your viewers, people that you don't know that are watching you and doubting themselves? Man, um, I would say, you know, you have to, you got to really dig deep, first of all. Um, and, and, and really tap into to yourself who you are and find confidence in it, right? You got to learn to love yourself. Um, don't seek validation from other people, like the outside, you know what I'm saying? Just because you're not famous on Instagram or, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean what you're doing isn't important or yeah. you can't make a living off of it or it won't grow to be something, you know what I'm saying? So I, I would say tap into that first and then find a niche, find a niche, um, find, like, what it is that makes you unique. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's going to help you stand out. What it is that makes you unique and makes you different, um, double down on that, right? Because that's what the world needs. You know, they need, like, it's a whole bunch of people doing the same thing, man. Um, Facts. You know what I'm saying? It's a copycat world. Um, but, like, if you, if you can find what makes you different, it doesn't matter, like, what no one says. Like, don't worry about it. Just just, just go for it. And especially if you're passionate about it, like, just go for it. Like, who cares if it ain't getting love, if it ain't getting likes, if it ain't, who cares? Like, just do it. Like, you never know. Like, you never know. Um, and then just uh, the last thing, the moderation. You know what I'm saying? Too much of anything is a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, have your fun, you know, in moderation. Don't, like, only work. Right, you're gonna stress yourself out. You're gonna be depressed to the point. Like, mm. go have fun. Yeah, facts. go have fun. It's important. Like, go out, have fun with your friends, see your friends. Everything's good in moderation. Yeah. Did you see yourself do in this position at any point of your life? Um, I, you know what? Like, I'm I'm super confident in myself, so I always knew that like Hell yeah. I was <laughs> destined for something. Yeah. But I didn't like I I would be lying if I said I knew. That like in fitness, what I'm doing would be as big as it is right now. I I did not see it. So give us that. What would you tell a? Let's say when you go to high school, fourteen. Talking to a fourteen year old DJ. Where you're sitting right now, what 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 can you tell him? A fourteen year old DJ. Yes, sir. <sighs> Don't be so fixated on football. Don't put yourself in a box. Don't cage yourself in. You know what I'm saying? There's there's more to you, and you're going to learn that, you know what I'm saying, as you grow and go. But, like, you, you're more than just football. You, you bring you bring light to the world. You know what I'm saying? You got a good energy about you. Just figure out, you know what I'm saying, what you like outside of football as well. Don't just be – it's not all football for you. You know what I'm saying? You're not a football player. You're just – you're a person, you're Darian, and you play football. Football is what you do. It's not who you are. Hey, I give that. Here, you drop a lot of gems, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You drop a lot of gems. Um, all right. I'm going to, I think this is mine, right? Yes, sir. Give me another cup because I still have some in here. I'm going to take a shot. We got to we gotta toast right, to life. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. We got to toast to life. Toast to life. Yes, sir. See, that's why I kept it his name because I was just telling people, uh, you need uh, another can, one? Yeah, yeah. You another one, didn't I? That's I tell people. I was like, I couldn't name this another thing because I like to drink. Oh, yeah. When, you're, when, you're around, when, you, when you're around boys or you're boys, your people, most of the time, a lot of you are just drinking. Oh, bro, and I'm 30. I'm 30 years old. So, like, and, and, like, another thing, like, I get a lot of, like, girls, girls don't understand. <laughs> like, a lot of girls will be like, yo, why do you, why do you like hanging around with your friends so much? Like, I get that. And, like, I'm just like, because my friends are fun. <laughs> Like, my friends are very fun. Yeah. I love being around my friends. Yeah. Like, we could, we can, you know, I'm about to go watch the Canelo fight. Like, we can just sit down, have drinks, and just talk about nothing. And just, like, just be, you know, shooting it, you know, watching, watching 
whatever. Move, like it, it, don't, it don't even matter. Dumb what we're YouTube watching. videos, like yeah, yeah, bro. My friends are fun. I love being around my friends. That's one thing that I am very grateful for and blessed for to have found my people, my friends, my yeah. family. Because I mean, without them, they keep me sane. Bro, they keep you grounded, bro. Yeah. You have fun, like. You feel recharged after you just spend a good time with your boys. Yeah. And you get a lot of laughs and, you know what I'm saying, you're just ready, you know? Yeah. And one thing I want to put this on here and tell you personally is one thing we always tell everybody that has come through the podcast, has been a part of the movement, joined the movement, thank everybody, is you can count on us for whatever you're doing, right? Because it's not just like, all right, you're here, cool, shake your hand, you're gone. Appreciate that. Hey, come, whatever you need, whatever support, whatever – Count on us. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we're here for for everybody showing love to us, and we got to show love back, and that's how we do it. Like, hey, whatever you got, whatever you got going on, we go support whatever it is. That's love, bro. Thank so you. So we show love to our everybody that has come about and done it. We repost, we we comment, whatever. But it's out of, out of love. So whatever love. you're doing, I appreciate you coming through on a Saturday on the Canelo fight. No doubt. I know you got a lot of shit going on, no, but good, I want to. Toast to life. I want to toast to everybody that has came through, had subscribed, everything. Cheers, Appreciate y'all. you. Let's Cheers. go.